Hey guys, this is Dan Duran with Rhino Cyber Security and of course, Get Cyber. I hope you're doing fantastic. And today I'm going to be talking about managed detection and response, basically minimizing cybersecurity breach impact through early detection, which is what an MDR does. All right, so let's get right into the agenda for today. First, a little bit of a selfish, shameless introduction of how myself. So basically my experience and my education in terms of cybersecurity. Then we'll talk about your network. Well, not your network, but maybe my network, but a basic network and how the different dimensions of, of cybersecurity interplay inside of a typical network. Then I'll talk about the disconnect. Why are there so many ransomware attacks in the world? Why do we see so much data being exfiltrated from companies. So I'll talk about the disconnect. Then I'll talk a, a bit about uh, managed detection and response, basically what it is in layman's terms. And then I have a surprise for you. I'll show you how to hack. Well, I won't teach you how to hack, but I'll show you how a hacker can actually hack into a network and how the MDR tools is going to be able to recognize that, be able to uh, detect it, and then the cybersecurity team can actually do something about it and stop the attacks much earlier than if you didn't have an MDR solution on your network. Then after that, we'll talk about why an MDR, why you need an MDR. And I think anybody or any company should use an MDR or have the capability to be able to hire an MDR company like ourselves. And then I'll give you a little summary and then we'll call it a day. Perfect. Let's get right into it. All right. About myself, I'm your friendly neighborhood cybersecurity guy. I have 14 years of experience in information security. I have a master's degree in science in cybersecurity from Georgia Tech Institute of Technology. I have a master's degree in business administration, an MBA from the University of Illinois and as well as specializations on information security and agile project management. I also am a uh, certified information system security professional, so a CISP from IS Square, and I'm a coach and cybersecurity trainer as well as the CTO for Rhino Cybersecurity. Right, so let's imagine that this is your network. In your network, you have many things, you have many dimensions. And the first dimension is your endpoint. So anything that acquires an IP address, um, your servers, your computers, your laptops, your phones, uh, your network devices, firewalls, routers, uh, switches, all of that, those are endpoints. And within the endpoints, you have cybersecurity technologies such as uh, antivirus, uh, endpoint protection, you have extended detection and response, you have endpoint detection and response, as well as app control, whitelisting, uh, group policy objects or GPOs, updates, patching, and all of those cybersecurity things that help you with endpoints. Now, in terms of the email, this is the second dimension is email. And email communications is never going to go away and it's been there forever. There is some really robust technology, cybersecurity technology for email, such as uh, secure email gateways, anti-spam, anti-impersonation, anti-phishing tools, and so on. Then we have the third dimension, which is your DNS. So anything that interacts with your browser, any HTTP, HTTPS communications to the outside world, uh, you have things like DNS filtering, uh, you have uh, web shields, a browser protection, and all of that good stuff. All right, so then we move on to the human component or the human dimension. And in here you have different administrative cybersecurity controls, such as uh, GRC or governments, risk and compliance. You have information security policies, basically telling the employees what to do and what not to do inside of a company. You have cybersecurity awareness training. You have simulations. You have all of this good stuff that should keep your employees safe. Then we move into the next dimension, which is your firewall. Your firewall is very important. It's your perimeter um, security, right? It's, uh, it basically stops anything from the outside bad world out there coming into your trusted 
network into your trusted cocoon, little cocoon protected, which is your network. Firewalls have been around since the 1980s, and they're very robust. They're all, they're all kinds of firewalls now. They smart firewalls now with AI, um, full stateful firewalls and all of that good stuff. But firewalls have a huge problem. And the main problem is that they can stop anything from the outside, coming from the outside world uh, into your network. But once something happens inside of your network, if there's a piece of malware, let's say, on one of your endpoints uh, that communicates to a CNC outside of the network, or let's say a human uh, lets in an email which a malware and then deploys or executes a malware inside of the network and reaches out into the world, the firewall opens its doors and it goes, yeah, that's just a user. It's a trusted person. It's coming from a trusted network going outside so i'm going to let the door open and i'm going to let this communication through um the network and and that's the problem with firewalls so you get something like this so this is a typical let's say infection coming through let's say a server that hasn't been patched or uh somebody somebody that downloaded malware let's say you got an infection inside of a an endpoint and then you have this situation this is called a command and control a cnc and you see how the malware is trying to communicate with the big bot or the, the hacker mothership basically outside into the world and everything starts to happen so once the hackers inside is able to try transverse through the network and uh, infiltrate and hack other machines other devices and this is what starts to happen inside of the network now this is remember this is your network and it's happening right under your nose right so this is pretty scary but you don't know it's happening and this doesn't happen overnight or right? it could happen through one day it, ha it can happen through or in in two days or three it can take the, the hackers take and i'll show you how long hackers are able to stay inside of a network um, before they are actually caught or detected um, but it happens through weeks sometimes months and sometimes years so it, it is pretty pretty crazy you have the hackers building a foothold inside inside of the network and at the end something awful happens which is the detonation point is where the hackers push the button and then everything comes down to a ransomware attack this is where all your machines all your servers all your computers they get locked out encrypted and not only that but if the hacker is able to extract all that good sensitive PII information, so a personal identifiable information from your computer, from your servers, they will extract that and then they, you will have a double extortion happening. First, for the decryption key to unencrypt all your devices and then secondly, for exposure to that data. So the hackers will say, hey, you know what? Well, you're able to restore from a backup, that's fine, but we have your data and if you don't pay us, then we will polish that data on the dark web right so that's basically how it happens it's really bad we we'll see them over and over again uh, you know people come to us and companies come to us saying that they've been hacked and what can we do then we have we jump into a response plan we don't want this and that's why we're talking about managed detection and response a little bit of uh, facts in here. I'm going to show you the cost of a data breach report in 2023. Uh, this has just came out from IBM Security. So thank you, IBM, for producing this amazing reports. Uh, we see here, so pay attention, in 2023, it took 240 days to be able to identify a breach on average in a company. And then it took 73 days to be able to counteract that so in total from the, the the time that the company is breached to the time it's able to be contained it is 277 days well that's pretty bad i mean that's what i'm talking about so when a hacker is inside of your company inside of your network it, it doesn't take one hour or a day to to uh, for the hackers to ransomware everything it takes days weeks months for them to do that so detection is very important 
Right, so uh, the next uh, figures that I have here are, first of all, it is 5.13 million US dollars for the average cost of a ransomware attack in 2023. Then we have the time to identify and contain a breach. And this is kind of like a, a histogram over the years since 2017, and nothing is getting better. It's not getting better. You see that it's 277 last year, 277 this year. So what is the disconnect? And this is the segue into my next slide. So what is the disconnect here? Why is this happening? Well, first of all, there are insufficient security measures in a company. And some of the companies, and I have some of the stats here, let me see, 45% uh, of processes are ineffective at mitigating attacks according to the reports. 45%. So, and this is when people, they, they're they very confident on endpoint detection, right? And on endpoint protection or firewalls that are doing so great, but they do not have a CM technology. They don't have an MDR inside of the company. Okay. So the next one is uh, lack of planning, right? So do you have a, a, a cybersecurity response plan? So 43% of SMBs do not have a cybersecurity plan in place. Now, that's, that's pretty critical, 43. So I ask you, do you have one? Well, if you don't, then you should do one right now. Remote working, we all know with the pandemic and all that, uh, people started to work remotely. People are coming back to the office, but not as much now. And then cloud adoption. Everybody's moving to the cloud. A lot of companies are moving into the cloud because it is cheaper without knowing the repercussions in terms of cybersecurity. Then we have advanced persistent threats from government sponsor hackers. We have supply chain attacks where the hackers are able to infiltrate, let's say, an endpoint protection or an R RMM or any of those tools, and they're able to massively hack a whole whack of companies. And then we have ransomware as a service, which is, is pretty bad. It's a whole economy. Anybody can actually hire ransomware tools so subscribe to ransomware tools and do ransomware attacks and right? so that's that's kind of like the state of affairs uh nowadays and then we have a workforce shortage and that is pretty bad so 3.5 million jobs in cybersecurity were left unfulfilled uh in 2022 in the united states alone uh, so that of course uh replicates into into canada as well so there is a lack of workforce and it's very expensive to be able to hire cybersecurity professionals and that's basically the disconnect that is happening Let, now let's talk about managed detection and response so managed detection and response is real-time intrusion detection or breach detection that is 24 7 365 so it doesn't matter if it's christmas or new year's or uh the weekend or the long weekend there is monitoring going on inside of the network and it's human monitoring so it's not just the tools and the technology right so but it's also the human component around it so the incident response and be able to do threat hunting and analysis of threats is done by tools and humans managed protection and response takes care of all of this the endpoints uh the email the firewall logs and um, the dns the human component all of that what humans are doing into one solid foundation and it's able to take care of the company right so now let's get into the interactive demo <laughs> 